Now, I am going to do something I don't normally do, which is to make a video correcting something from a previous video, specifically my Island Gardens video. That's the word video four times already in one sentence. We are off to a great start. Normally I don't bother making videos specifically to correct mistakes spotted by viewers, having had bad experiences with that in the past. Long story short, if you let it be known that you made the video because someone pointed out a mistake, your comment section will fill with people trying to find mistakes in this video so they can get a video of their own. And before long you find yourself wondering why you didn't just become a lighthouse keeper or something. I prefer to make the correction the next time I come around to the original subject. But I received an email that caused me to make an exception. You see, in my video on Island Gardens, I talked about this incident on the 10th of March 1987, in which a Docklands Light Railway train, Vehicle 04, wound up overhanging the end of the viaduct. This occurred during testing, before the line was opened. The explanation I gave at the time was that the train was being driven manually during testing and the automatic equipment to stop the train had not been properly installed. This was not quite correct. Now, in my defence, excuses, excuses, this was the explanation I received from my admittedly sparse resources. Let's just say that the DLR publicity materials are a little light on information on how their trains could smash through buffers. I received an email from an inside source, a gentleman named Jim Mead, who was the software engineer behind much of the control system at Poplar. He was able to fill me in on what actually happened and gave me permission to share his story with you guys. So here's the true story of the Island Gardens accident. The occasion was a safety test taking place at night, specifically to test the stopping capability of the train. Famously, the DLR is automatic, which is great because it means you get to sit at the front if you're quick enough. I love it at Bank Station when you get a bunch of people standing at the front of the platform all casual and pretending that they're not going to shove their way to the front as soon as the doors open. But the DLR can also be driven manually if necessary. This test was designed for the worst case scenario to observe what would happen if a train were being driven faster than usual into the station. There was automatic train protection, or ATP, equipment installed to stop the train before the buffers. Now, it might seem a little foolhardy to carry this test out with an actual train, but I should emphasise that at this point the ATP equipment was fully operational and the crew had no reason to suspect anything untoward. In fact, they ran the test six times with everything going to plan. It was on the 7th, lucky 7, that the accident occurred. The train crashed through the buffer post and wound up hanging off the viaduct. How did this happen? Well, it wasn't the crew's fault, but a software issue. Now, this is where things get a little technical, so I'm going to quote Jim's email directly because I know nothing about computers. In his email, Jim says, there were three computer systems on the vehicle. One determined where it was, using an internal database counting loop transitions between the rails and wheel revolutions. Two was the ATP computer that used a topology database of the railway to determine the desired and safe speeds of the train, and where the brakes should be applied. Three was the propulsion computer that controlled power to the traction motors and also controlled the brakes. The three computers were electronically interconnected and talked to each other via data messages between them. Each ran in a one-second processing loop asynchronously, which is critical in understanding what happened. For the first six tests, the time between the train detecting where it was, one, determining it needed to stop, two, and removing power and applying brakes, three, was 2.5 seconds or less well within the 2.7 seconds calculated for the maximum approach speed and safe braking distance. For the seventh and last test, the computers were asynchronously completely out of phase with each other, so that the maximum time to send messages between them was almost three seconds beyond safe braking distance, causing the vehicle to not stop in time. 
That is, Computer 1 detected where it was at the beginning of its loop and sent its message to 2 at the end of its loop, almost one second later. Computer 2 was just far enough into its loop to miss 1's message until the start of its next loop, almost one second later. And Computer 3 was the same, just missing 2's message until the start of its next loop. Total time, almost 3 seconds. Too long to safely stop the vehicle. And that, viewers, is how less than a second can make all the difference. Naturally, this accident resulted in much investigation. The safe braking distance was reviewed to be even safer, and the software was reworked to remove that latency in message processing. Extensive testing was carried out to make sure that no such incidents could reoccur, which, of course, they never did. It could be argued, and indeed the DLR's PR people did argue, that the accident was a good thing. In a way. It arose as a result of comprehensive safety investigations involving scenarios that were unlikely to arise, and then testing those scenarios over and over again. Had they been complacent, simply said, there's no point testing for something that's never going to happen, that loophole would never have been spotted. Had the same thing happened with a fully loaded train, it might have been a much more tragic story. All too often, accidents happen because of unlikely scenarios. Circumstances lining up that no one ever expected. So really, far from being a blunder, this is exactly what safety testing is for. I mean, admittedly, it was an unauthorised test, but come on. So, I hope you enjoyed this story of how an accident prevented a potential disaster. I would once again like to thank Jim for his explanation, which has not only filled me in on that accident, but on how the DLR's trains and safety systems actually worked. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit like and subscribe for more videos like this. I'd also like to thank my Ko-fi and Patreon donors for being the unauthorised test to my safety system. Links to those are below. My Patreon features early access to videos, raw and behind-the-scenes footage, ad and sponsor-free versions of upcoming videos, and even some exclusive videos for them as wants them. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio!